Hey guys, Darcy here. I just want to do a real quick video just showcasing some stuff that I don't always see talked about uh, in videos and when I do, I don't always see it talked about in the ways that, that I utilize it, which is uh, alternatives with Inside Logic Pro. And there are really two kinds of alternatives that I think uh, are really beneficial uh, and that always should be considered. So the first one is track alternatives. If you go click on any one of these tracks and you uh, right click on it, um, and then you go to configure track header, or you can use the short command. You can turn on track alternatives, uh, and then you can also go here and um, store this as a user default. So if I store this, it'll always come back. And track alternatives allow you to essentially create a new track uh, with inside the same one. So essentially you could go and record a whole brand new take and then go in A and B between them. Uh, this is a good way when you're just trying to come up with new ideas to add to the song uh, and that way you don't have to have say different file versions. Um, then there's also one other kind which is the actual project alternative. So if I go up to file, come down to project alternatives, you'll see that you, you have, right now I have one alternative. Uh, I can edit and I can export all alternatives as a project. So if I create a new alternative, it'll just get, ask for a title. Now, a lot of times when I see people do project alternatives, they're usually using it such as, uh, I'm going to have a, you know, version A of the song, version B of the song. A lot of those times though, it's like a, a different chorus, which you can, again, you can use the track alternatives. What I like to use the project alternatives for is tracking, arrangement, and mixing. So for instance, I could say, if I, let's say this song is completed and everything, I could make this my, my mixing version. Click OK, uh, ask me to save. And then when I come back to, to, to my project alternatives, you'll see that I'll have mixing here. I can edit and you'll see a full list of everything. Where I find this very beneficial is, let's say you, you uh, have a, a tracking one. Um, let's say you've recorded uh, a bunch of vocals and you have a bunch of MIDI effects and then you go, you got to go back and you need to record something and latency is going to be a problem. Well, you can make a new alternative uh, that bounces every single track down to uh, stems with all the effects so that way you actually are not processing anything in real time and then record to it. But of course, you're not actually going to, you know, utilize that for mixing and you can bring uh, your tracks into um, the other alternative. Uh, additionally, let's say that you've worked on, on a song, it's completed, and you could do that same thing where you bounce everything down, and now you can start your mixing process. Uh, obviously, don't bounce uh, effects into um, your mixing alternative that you wouldn't want to 100% be there. Uh, a lot of times, you were probably just going to bounce down your MIDI uh, 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 VST tracks uh, and your vocals raw and, and so forth. Just, I thought this is just something beneficial because it's really about um, workflow when you use project alternatives, more so than just having alternate versions of the song. And in terms of copying a track from one to another, let's say the, in the scenario where you had a whole song and then you had to go back and re-record some vocals in your tracking alternative, um, let's say this random track here that, that I've popped in um, that I wanted to copy it, I could go Command C load up the other version, you know, create a new track and paste it in. Uh, additionally, if I bounced it out, I could also import it that way. Let's say I had multiple tracks that I wanted to, to bring in. Uh, I haven't figured out a smoother transition yet. I'm not sure if Logic has it and I don't know about it or if this is just the best alternative at this point. Um, but regardless, it's just going to make it a lot better for recording, say, for instance, in low latency or, you know, mixing and making sure you're not looking at any of your MIDI tracks so you get the most performance out by having these uh, uh, alternatives. And if you are moving from, say, your tracking phase to your arrangement phase to your mixing phase in that order and not going backwards, then it's going to be very efficient because you're always kind of moving forward with what you have into the next uh, alternate. Now, if you found this beneficial, please uh, like, subscribe, uh, and let me know if you want more videos like this.